your sense of community when you're free rolling through the mountains rolling through the valley rolling through paradise with me hello everyone well i'm very pleased to welcome back to the show desiree kakubi amuzu and he got it right whoa Yay! <laughs> so welcome back to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. Oh, I didn't I, think I, I wasn't sure that was going to actually happen. I was like, okay. <laughs> there so, you go. Um, yeah. So what's happened since the last time you were on? Well, let's see. Um, everything and nothing. I think I was wrapping up. When did? When was I on last? I'd ha- oh, I can tell you in just a minute or so. <laughs> yeah, I'll know exactly. Because I sent you the what that section. Message. So um, hold on, I will tell you. Uh, April seventeenth. Okay. Yeah, so that's not that long ago. Not that long ago, about a month. So I was just finishing up, and we were just starting to put out videos with um, Fraser Valley Auto Mall. So, yeah, I think that's kind of around when things were. Yeah, March. We'd been about a month in, right? Maybe even a couple weeks in that we were putting out videos. So, um, uh, so yeah. Remind the audience now what you do, what type of videos. Uh just uh, you know, like I, I'm a, I'm a, hmm, I guess <laughs> I'm not yet an emerging. I'm a documentary filmmaker, and I obviously have been using. Um, like, you know, I've only done a, a few independent things and, and the rest of it has been, you know, has been, uh, stuff that I've been, ta- I've been taking my skills towards businesses. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I haven't really produced the documentaries that I want to and like any full length feature, feature documentaries, um, yet, yet. Um, and, uh, yeah, in a nutshell, that's what I am. I, and I, I do like documentary photography as well. So anything having to do with, with, uh, with real life, with people, and and uh, real subjects, I love. I love being involved in. Yeah. Do a documentary. Is it the same of, of doing any kind of a film where you need to get backers? Well, I mean, that's you can. I definitely that's the way to to do it. Um, if you can. You know, if you can get sponsored for a documentary, that's that's the way to go. Finding the money for one is is um, uh, you know, from everything that I know of, from from back when I was in college to to mm-hmm. now, it's just you know, you got to find the money to do it. Yeah. And there's all sorts of uh, um, there's grants that are out there to support that. Um, you know, but not a whole bunch mm-hmm. in Canada. So you don't kind of think you have to reach out to different different organizations. I know Sundance has some stuff. Um, there's a film fund, the film, the film fund. Um, there's also a lot of a lot of series and documentaries that get made through uh, Telus, and I believe it's uh, with Storyhive. Oh. Um, so yeah, you have to get funding funding for these documentaries, right? And uh, and everybody's got a different reason as to why they wanted to they want to create documentaries sure. um yeah yeah so what kind of documentaries are you um uh, interested in producing well i'm i'm i want to i want to stay at a community level i really am in love with um you know the idea of continuing i suppose i, I suppose with my own flair to it what national geographic has done in regards to you know um documenting people um you know uh, don't get me wrong i love to sit out in nature for for hours and days and weeks to try to film some kind of a unique bird jump in from one tree to another but um no i'd prefer to deal with people and um yeah it's that fascination of of getting to know your fellow human being is a big deal for me and i think that that's what so far makes every every instance or iteration of uh, my growth so so much fun is because I'm learning something about someone else and I'm, therefore I learn something about myself yeah. in the process right 
that's why I do this. It's the same type of thing, yeah. anyway, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Although it'd be pretty hard to interview a bird, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure. No, I, you know what? Like, yeah, you obviously, but you know, you yeah, it's it's um, I think obviously you find what you love and you go with that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I love. I mean, maybe it's because of um, you know, my upbringing, like my parents and and how they were always interested in people and and what their lives were like and how uh, how they could help people and um and so it just carried on through me and uh so I, I like doing that I, I want to do more of it it's it is a challenge because you know you still it, have to make a living <laughs> correct yeah that's it right so there's a, there's a skill that 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 you gain from uh getting authentic authentic um interviews with people mm -hmm. so yeah I've been using that skill in my you know in my business life to be able to make a living like you like you say um and that's great I'd love to figure out a not figure out a way but do better at you know sustaining myself and being able to produce documentaries that I want to produce mm -hmm. um and uh do them in a bigger in a bigger way or a more complete way if, if there if there is one, you know? Right, yeah. I think that's everybody, you know, like I, I interview lots of musicians and they would love to just perform, right? Mm -hmm. But the reality is most people do not live uh, or make, able to make a living doing that. And it's, right. You know, it's the way it is, right? It, right, you, right. You know, because you are happier when you're doing something that you really enjoy. That's right, yeah. So, I mean... Yeah, you do. You definitely, you know, doing something for the money is 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 uh, you know, it can be. But you start chasing the the check, then it's tough, you know. Yeah. Um, but you do need it. Yeah. I, I think I think there is some some enjoyment in that process because, you know, like you, even though you know it, you have to f be creative about it and um. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've had to kind of be good at marketing as well um, and figure out new ways of uh, new, new angles on supporting businesses uh, in their marketing endeavors. Um, so, yeah, you know, find you in the valley, find you media. Primarily the, the niche that I that I have for myself is is filmmaking and documentary filmmaking or documenting video about a business right. and and repurposing that content that we create to to for that business to use um for for their for their uh, marketing purposes and give them something that's really evergreen i think that so far the 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 videos that i've filmed it's not like i have you know a hundred clients that i've filmed for but we're growing in that in that repertoire yeah. um the videos that i've been able to be part of the clients have been willing to work with me because of that what I get out of them and and I feel like you know even if you know, technology changes that the interviews that, that I was able to capture are such a good snapshot of who they are as a business mm -hmm. that it's evergreen for them like they can use it 10 three times you know they can they can use it over and over throughout mm -hmm. the the the, the the length of their business for sure um yeah so that's cool i i but i uh i started supporting some of their their other um parts of their business i created a uh, a software um a software arm to the business and which is i don't know which is a departure from <laughs> from doing film yeah, but it was communic it was communications, right. and um, that's been that's been unique. I mean, it's sustained itself. I haven't really scaled it at all, um, but uh, it's yeah, it's basically it's automation, text messaging, and automation for businesses, um, and it's really kind of cool right now because I just integrated it with uh, Chat GPT, which is i'm so excited about that 
I don't know. It's I'm nerding out on that particular piece of it. Uh, yeah. So you get to learn. I'm saying that I've had to learn other skills in addition to filming just so I could survive. Right. And it, you know, and if it provides for me in a way that I'm comfortable and that my spare time, I can still go out and film stuff or find you in the valley for find you films. Um, great. You know, as long as I'm having fun and you know I'm staying positive in my heart, why not? I I totally agree with you. You know, yeah, yeah, not, yeah. right? And those skills you gain are, are are actually gains. It's not like you're losing by learning new no, things, that's, right? That's right. Yeah, they'll always yeah. be put to use somewhere along the line. Even if you get away from, you know, get to the point where you can't just totally do what you want to do. Yeah, still skills that you can incorporate in what you're doing, right? For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, true. Like I, for me, I would love to be able to travel and do interviews everywhere you know but i don't have that means right so, right right you know i do the either they people are local they can come here to my place or we do this right. so you know yeah yeah right have you ever done any in-person interviews i'm i'm throwing it back at you eh probably yeah. not <laughs> no no it's no problem yeah you know lots actually people come here quite often okay yeah and um, I, like, I like that because it's a totally different uh vibe, different even though vibe. i can connect with people i, I i'm amazed actually that how i am able to connect with people do it like this way yeah you're right and i've made friends that, that you know it's like or people now i now consider my friends that i've never met in person <laughs> yeah 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 that's, that's so it's a good cool point. You know? yeah have you spotted me out in in the daily life out in chilliwack no <laughs> not yet no <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have this weird thing uh yeah. Uh, unless I see people quite a lot, I don't always recognize people. Okay. And and it's to do with like I am I have social anxiety, okay. so when I'm out there, yeah, I'm looking straight to where I want to go and not looking around me too much, you know. Right, right. <laughs> it just interesting. Went yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm, I've, yeah, I, I hear you there. It's uh. So what you have know, you done here in Chilliwack? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 go ahead. What have you done here in Chilliwack? Well, um, well, recently, uh, Culture Co. Uh, invited me out with um, Fraser Valley Eats. I guess it's not documentary. Mm -hmm. uh, we went out and um, filmed some, some content around uh, two food places, uh, um, Red Chili's, it's a new kind of bar that's on five corners right right um sports bar fa family friendly sports bar and then uh, went to whiskey it's a new place that just opened up at the hotel the royal the royal hotel that's right down by where i live by the way <laughs> um so the next time you come to chilliwack on a, on something something like that you'll have to come here and do a video because i'm really oh. i'm really close to five corners Oh, well, perfect. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, we're not that far from each other, Nancy. Are you? Where are you? I'm uh, I'm on Gore. Oh, oh, for some reason, I didn't realize you were in Chola. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. 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 Well, and now, yeah, there you go. There, there you go. So now we can, we can. Now we'll do another coffee. one in person. There you go. That yeah. sounds good. Well, you'll have to, we'll have to do a little guest interview thing on both of our our platforms that'd be kind of cool yes uh so yeah what it's called it's called whiskey river i want to say i don't Was know it whiskey could be there's so many new places at right around five corners there yeah that's right whiskey richards whiskey, whiskey. whiskey richards right they just opened up um okay. uh like not too long ago but uh they have yeah they're you know a cocktail cocktail bar i'm not i'm not much for i don't mind a uh a nice stiff drink i suppose but i'm not much for drinking so it's not something i'd gravitate to but the food was awesome there um yeah yeah they had a, a poutine uh like a smash almost like a smashed potato poutine mm -hmm. which is kind of cool um the chef was was from montreal um his name escapes me at the moment but he is really nice so i interviewed both owners Great. um and that's kind of why I think I get involved in different projects is I love the interview piece, right? So 
I didn't mind taking photos of the food and being involved with that and and everything, but I was kind of interested to see, you know, who they were mm. and uh, why they started their business. I think, you know, building, um, you know, starting restaurants for one is, is, gosh, I mean, that's. It's not, uh, yeah, it's not easy. It is not easy. You know, I, I can see why the draw is there, maybe because it's, it's so much fun and there's, you know, the instant rush, the high of creating, you know, a vibe in a city or community and um you know every day you know you you I mean you can do really great at it but yeah. my gosh you know some of these some of these restaurants they and they suffered so much through the pandemic right like so much <laughs> um yeah well it's uh, so I'm in, I'm impressed uh, it'd be nice to see a little bit uh I think it'd be nice to have more like I, there needs to be more in Chilliwack. I don't feel like there's enough mm -hmm. for what we want to do. There's no, I don't know, maybe the, the nightlife stops at 9 p.m., which is okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to say go out and I want to see a party scene. That's not <laughs> what I'm into. I just mean that if, like, if I'm in Vancouver um, and I'm working late, I can go down and still get a hot dog Yeah, at a hot dog cart place if there is one, usually late. Um, there's a few late eateries that are good, like really good eateries that are still open. Mm. So it's just different. And I know it's, I know it's always going to be that way. As long as we have commutes, it's going to be that way. Cause people got to get to bed early to travel into Vancouver to work, yeah. um, and so forth. But, and I think I another thing too, might be, there's a lot of seniors here in Chilliwack. This is true. Well, you know, and I, I wonder, I, I haven't done the numbers on it, but I wonder, well, isn't there a lot of seniors in Vancouver as well? There should be, right? Well, yes, but but also be, it being such a much bigger place, you also have true. all age there. True. This is true. Yeah. It's a lot smaller. So, yeah. So the, yeah, the, the, the ratio is, is yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, there you go. Being a senior, like <laughs> nights are not my thing. You know, no. I do go to certain, right. places, but because I tend to wake up at five in the morning and then, and it's like, it's after seven, I don't want to beat the out. <laughs> yeah. Well, question. <laughs> okay. But do you, do you take, do you take Mondays off like the rest of Chilliwack? Cause I know I interview. When... <laughs> do you know what I'm saying though? What I'm driving at? I hear you. I hear you. Everything I... on everything on Mondays. I'm like, well, everything's closed on Monday. I don't understand. Neither do I. Listen, I grew up in Montreal. Okay. There's always stuff happening, right? Right, right. You know? So. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Different thing. Well, yeah. You know, I don't know why restaurants, a lot of restaurants don't open on Monday. Um, but but maybe because they don't get a full, like, they don't, they work maybe six days a week or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Know? So... Perhaps that's why I, I'm not quite sure, but anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's... now that I know you're you're in, you're so close by, we'll have to do something together sometime out there. <laughs> that would be really fun. <laughs> I think it'd be really great. You know, I think it'd be wonderful to see. Uh, you know what I'd love to do? I well, first of all, it'd be cool to have you interview someone, and I'll film you. That'd be kind of cool. Oh yeah, for I'm into anything like that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, any, any, there, is there any subjects out there that you think would be unique for us to document in Chilliwack? Like, is there anything that hasn't been talked about? Well, not sure if it's like not not. This is not unique to Chilliwack, but I just made a post this morning about how you know I live I live where we have a lawn, and they just. Right their building has a lawn and they just had it sprayed for weeds. And it's like, why do we have lawns? I would mm. like, and, and I'm in my building. I'm, I'm unique in thinking that lawns are wasted space. Okay. So I would like okay. to talk to people about that. Why do you think we should have a lawn as opposed to plants or vegetables growing or whatever, you know? Uh, interesting. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, that's, that's a very good point. I mean, I know I, it looks nice. I get that. Yeah. But is it but we pay somebody. We pay somebody to come and cut the grass. We pay somebody to 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 uh, spray for the weeds which we know mm -hmm. isn't bad for the environment. Why would we still do that? Those are the questions that I'd like to ask people who for it. Why are you willing to do that to our environment still with all the knowledge that's out there now, you know? Right. 
it's the aesthetic, know. right? Yeah. Do they, do, 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 why does the lawn? Why is why are lawns so important? I mean, yeah, for the it's for the mind, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Right. We there must be some level of like we see a lawn and we go ah, oh, it looks beautiful and everything like that. Yeah. But could we be doing something different? I know that um, I spoke with, um, oh, there's a, there's a, one of the one of the videos on Find You in the Valley is with um, I can't remember her name, but it's Honey Bee Honey Bee Farming. Okay. And um, let me just check this out here. And I did an interview with somebody, um, I've forgotten her name, but she is a gorilla gardener. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I want to say it's, her name is Eustace? No. I don't know why I'm thinking Eustace. The name, the, the business sounds familiar. Honeybee Farming. Yeah. Um, it's not that far back. <laughs> Can't be that far back. Hold on here. Let me get it. Let me get it. Where are you? <laughs> come on and i can't find my stuff on my on my phone i have to go on to, on to my my uh it's the honest bee honest bee honey bee farming honest bee i want to say right um because the bees we need the bees this is the thing right so she was talking she was so the reason why i, I i'm I, it came to mind is because yeah there it is um es essence her name was Unique. It's oh. called a, a, a Essence. And she has Honest Farming. So at Honest Farming. Um, and it's out of Langley. Mm -hmm. um, but she talked a little bit about how, you know, she, you could plant, you didn't have to have lawns the, the way we have them. Like we could, um, you know, plant clover and, 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 and different types of, different types of plants. And those are actually beneficial for bees to come in and pollinate and, and 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 so forth and that's really important for our environment yeah. i mean that's why there's you know bees are used and some might say that they're killed because they're used so aggressively in farming but it's you know it's still less harmful to the environment in the long run of so course work, you know working with the bees working with the, how things work yeah you know you got to wonder when did lawns start I looked it up. Did you? Okay, let's tell me. Tell me. I'm, I'm, in, I the, in England in the 17th century, and it was okay. the wealthy. Somehow, the wealthy. Somebody just decided, oh, it would be nice to have because grass grows, right? So right. Somebody decided that the grass would be nice in front of their homes, and it came to North America <laughs> in the 1800s, 1870 or something like that. Right. Because I was curious about that. Like it's. You know, and then people worry, you know, in the summer when we get that really dry, dry one, we especially uh, had some really extreme heat. Right. The lawns go brown, you know. <laughs> and we start, we're worried about water. We're sneaking okay. out in the middle of the night, to different parts Don't of the day. Lawn. The first time we get rain, it's going to come back. You can't kill the darn stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the only way to kill it is to dig it out and get rid of it. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> why do we have lawns but now it might not see in Chilliwack though in different parts of Chilliwack there's barely any lawn yeah. like there's there's no space for it there's like little patches of green and they're like oh it's a lawn you have a backyard you have a front lawn wow yeah. it's like <laughs> really <laughs> and in my building it's so weird because uh, this is a really strange setup but in order for the the landscaper to mow the lawn he has to climb over the retaining wall Okay. Because we have a gate at the back of the building, but the the proper the parking area behind us belongs to some another business a business. So yeah. we don't have access to go in and out of that gate because they're allowed to park their truck right in front of our, that gate. Okay. Okay. You know, and this is like <laughs> I don't know who decided that this was okay. So uh, we have to pay this guy to come up, climb over this wall with his lawnmower, you know. It is so dumb. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so that's we're doing an episode on lawns. Why do you think we need lawns? Yeah. And what are the what are the alternatives? Yeah. Exactly. I like that. 
Yeah, I yeah. Like yeah. I, I love that. We'll, uh, you know, maybe we can go around and we can do a campaign on, you oh. know, what would you change your lawn to? If you could change it, what would it be? Right. Uh, <laughs> and, well, let's end it there. I think this is going to be so much fun. So Awesome. Awesome. End it there. So um, just say goodbye to the audience. Hey, goodbye, audience. <laughs> it's a pleasure talking with you. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching the show. And um, I hope you'll tune in and subscribe. I'm always looking for subscribers. Heck yeah. Like, uh, uh, hopelessly hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's no small talk right there. <laughs> so take care, everybody, and a sense of community till the wax a place to be. A sense of community where you're free. Rolling through the mountains, rolling through the valley, rolling through paradise with me. It's multicultural, you're sure to see it all. Chilliwack's the place to be, you'll see. Come party in the park, go dancing after dark. Chilliwack's the place to be, you'll see.